When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own temple, which he cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. And then Mark 16, 1. Mark 16, 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you, you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and they fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that it will not return void, but instead, Lord, it's meant to equip and encourage your church. Lord, I ask today that, that our eyes and ears would be open to you, that our heart would be the fertile soil that your word, that the seed of your word is planted into. Lord, most importantly, let it be your words that are spoken today. In Jesus' name, amen. So over the last few, few weeks, I've spent a lot of time reading and rereading and reading again the four gospel accounts on the, the last Passion Week of Christ. And we did our, our first fast in a long time. No show of hands or anything, but those of you who, were, who fasted, I know that the Lord blessed you one way or another. I know that there was a, a change that took place. I know that God did something within you. I know he did within me as well. And I'm excited about what God is doing in this time and in the season of my life. This word this morning is, is part of that walk that I've been through. I mean, as, as you guys know, I've, I, over this past month and a half, I've been awaiting surgery that's coming. And that's something I'm going to have to walk through. Am I scared? No. Am I fearful? No. Am I making plans so that if everything goes wrong that there'll be plans? Absolutely. But in faith, I'm, it's not even going to be a worry. We don't have to open those boxes. God's got, God's got this. But God's got something so much bigger in store for each one of us when we sit back and we, we study out this story. Today, there was, there was, there was something that, that stood out in the story with me. And actually, it goes all the way back to last year. So this sermon today is something that God put on my heart last year. And what we're going to talk about today is, is the stone. That stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. And I know what you're thinking. Pastor Jake, really? You're, you fixated on a stone for a year? Yeah. <clears throat> it's what the Lord has really pressed upon me to preach. I mean, you can look in my calendar and my phone. I had an alarm set for like a month back to say, hey, rolling stone, look it up, study it. This is what you're preaching on for Easter. I knew. And I love it when that happens. So you fellow saints get to partake and go with me. Today's sermon title is, The Stone Has Been Rolled Away. The stone has been rolled away. And that's significant for each one of us at different levels, depending on where we're, we are in our walk with the Lord. So in Luke 15, 44, Pilate is shocked. Pilate is shocked that Jesus is already dead. He, he can't believe it. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus come to him and they say, we want the body of Jesus. 
he can't believe that there are, he's, he's already passed. It was Good Friday that, that Jesus went through his suffering and died all in one day. See, those of us who watched The Passion of the Christ, we saw that the, he took that beating, and that beating was an extra beating in, early in the day. That primed him for death. The other two who were up on the cross with him, they, weren't, <clears throat> they didn't go through as much suffering as Jesus did. For Jesus, with the Passover holiday, there was a rush to get him into the tomb, get him into the ground, into his final bless, resting place. You're unclean if you're a Jew and you touch a dead body on a normal day. How about on the Sabbath? That's like a double jeopardy. So Friday, Jesus died and he was buried. Matthew 27, 60 and 61. And, laid, and they laid Jesus in his own new tomb. This is actually Joseph's tomb, which Joseph had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. See, Mary and Mary, they were there. They were watching the stone get rolled and they were watching the stone get placed in front of the tomb. <clears throat> they saw the whole huge st stone. They knew how big the stone was. They even saw the guards get there and the guards stand outside the tomb. They knew what was taking place. They saw it all happen. After Joseph and Nicodemus had went to get permission to take the body, who, who went and saw Pilate? The priest, right? The priest. And you know what? They were complaining and whining. They wanted the stone to be sealed and for there to be guards placed in front of the tomb. So by the time they got Jesus prepared and they got him into the tomb, the stone is rolled, the guards are showing up, and they're, they're placing the seal on the tomb. Recently, I was handed a brand new piece of technology still in the box. It smelled fabulous. It was wonderful. Those tech geeks, you know what I'm talking about. It's got the safety seal on it, the little tape, and I'm digging in my pocket to pull out my pocket knife to cut the tape off so I can open the box. And, and that tape is, is there for a specific reason. See, that when you go into the store and you're buying a piece of technology and it's in the box and it's got the safety seal there, but it's been cut, are you going to take that one or are you going to take the next one back on the shelf that's still sealed? You're going to take the one behind that's still sealed because that's, that's the one you know hasn't been tampered with. See, it's the same way when Daniel was, was placed into the, the tomb, or the, the, yeah, the tomb, it was a tomb technically. He was placed with the lions in the lion's den. And they sealed it up and they put a wax seal on it and the king's signet ring touched it and left a mark. That's exactly what they did here with this tomb. See, the, the priests were so concerned and they were so worried that somebody was going to mess with Jesus' body that they wanted to go to this great length. It's the same way what they did with that stone. That was the same plan. Nobody could tamper with that stone. The only one who could tamper with that stone was Pilate at his command or God at his command, which trumps Pilate's command, right? The only reason Pilate had authority is because it was given from above. Even Jesus told them that. There was no other way that this tomb could be tampered with. The concern was that the disciples were going to take the body and say that he was raised again. If that had happened later on, would the disciples have said, yeah, I'm going to go to death for this, knowing full well that I tampered with the body. They would have never done that. Now Mary, the other Mary, and Salome, they would have watched that stone be put in place. The stone is called a great stone, a large stone, a massive stone. It's a heavy stone. The word there in the Greek is, is a megas stone, M-E-G-A-S, a megas stone. When, when I think of this megas stone, I think of Harrison Ford, the first Indiana Jones movie. He's in the temple. He's got the bag of soil, and he's looking at the idol, and he makes a quick switch, and he watches it go down. The darts start shooting. He takes off running out of the tomb, and as he's running out, the rock starts rolling behind him, and he was about to get crushed, and, and he doesn't. 
because he gets out of the way just in time. That's the type of big rock I think of when I think of the tomb. The next day, Saturday, after the burial, the next day was Saturday. What's significant with Saturday, church? It's the Jewish Sabbath day. It's the day of rest. The Sabbath didn't allow the ladies to go to the tomb. When Jesus said on the third day, that's Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday is the third day. He's rising his tomb again. He is the tomb that's been raised. The Sabbath would not have allowed the ladies to go and anoint the body. We know looking back that Jesus was doing a work in this time behind the scenes. The Sabbath was a time that the ladies were forced to wait for God to do what God needed to do. We all have those in our life. However, what do we do? We rush, don't we? We rush. We get impatient and we say, we, got, we need to move into this or we need to move into that. Doing youth ministry for so long, you know how many 12-year-olds I had in the youth ministry that thought they were 18? <clears throat> you know how many 18-year-olds I know that think they're 25? More than three. It's a lot. <clears throat> See, why? Why? Why do we want to rush? Rush what God's doing. See, some of us need to take that time of rest to allow God to work in us. See, God wants to do that work in us, but, but we get ahead of God's plans. And when we get ahead of God's plans, you know what happens? We make a mess of it, right? We screw it up. It's, God still works. He'll still do what he does, but it's not going to be exactly the way we're anticipating. When Mary, Martha, and Salome are heading to the tomb, I'm probably just going to call them the ladies from now on. It's a lot easier. They're heading to the tomb in the book of Mark. They, they ask a question in Mark 16, 3. Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the, of the tomb? See, this is their discussion on their way to the tomb. They're, they're heading there, and the first thing that comes to their mind is, that big heavy stone, the three of us ladies can't move it out of the way. Now, I'm not saying you ladies are weak. I mean, my, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is J.L., who during the time of Judges, with Deborah was the judge, Sisera, the, the warring army leader or whatever, she ends up, J.L., takes a tent peg and a hammer and puts it through his skull. And this isn't just a, a little tent peg. This is a big grab a hold of tent peg. And the hammer she's grabbing a hold of is like a full-sized, huge sledgehammer. The women aren't weak. <clears throat> Some of y'all scare me. Upon looking up, the stone has been rolled away as they're coming towards the tomb. They see the stone is being rolled away. In the first two verses, they had left, and they were on the way to the burial location with everything they needed to anoint the body. They, already, they knew the stone was going to be in their way, but yet as they approached, they also had faith that that stone would either be rolled out of the way by somebody or they could get somebody to move it out of the way. See, the stone being rolled out of the way of their life was an answer to their faithfulness. The ladies, as they approached, that stone had already been rolled. They were worried about the stone. That stone could have easily caused their plans in life to cause a stumble, right? That stone in their way could have been the stumbling block the roadblock, the blockage to keep them from going to where they ultimately needed to be. It was the one thing that stood in the way. However, the Lord saw what was causing them to stumble, and he had it rolled aside for them to enter that place of the throne. Amen? I mean, glory to God. He, he saw their faithfulness and rolled this mammoth stone out of the way. I don't think you guys are getting this. I don't think you're getting how big this stone actually is and how important this stone is to get out of your way. See, there was a timing that needed to be fulfilled as well before the rolling of the stone. There was a timing that needed to be taken place. There was things that needed to happen behind that stone in order for that stone to be rolled out of the way. See, Jesus, there was work taking place behind the scenes. I remember when, when Jamie and I were pregnant for Jaden. Well, I say we. She was the pregnant one. I just per, I was there. Um, when Jamie, Jamie was pregnant with, with Jaden, I remember my mom saying to me, 
oh, don't find out what the gender is. If you were meant to know what the gender is, you'd have a window and you could see. God would have put a window in there. So those of you who are still mad at me because I wouldn't tell you any of the genders of any of our kids, you can still thank my mom. Because at that point, I said, you know what? If, if we're not meant to know, you're the one who said it. Nobody's meant to know. I said, but Jamie and I will know because, you know, we're paying for the medical stuff. We want to know. This way we can pick green and yellow. <clears throat> See, from that point forward, we, we did keep the gender and everything a secret. Some things are meant to be a secret until the appointed time. See, we don't know exactly what was taking place within that tomb. But we know that the, the spirit of Jesus was at work in a mighty way. See, we don't know what happened inside the tomb, but there was a growth that was taking place. There was life that was taking place within Jesus. There were trips, depending on which scriptures you read, there were trips taken to hell as well as heaven. There were trips to go meet with Satan. There was trips to go meet with the Father. All of that took place from the time Jesus died until the time he rose again. See, the, the stone was there for a season, but that season was not a forever. The stone was allowed to keep the world from Jesus until the appointed time. That stone wasn't meant to be there forever. That stone was meant to be rolled out of the way at its appointed time. The other cool thing is when they went into the tomb, and they saw the linens from Jesus, it, was, it wasn't like they were all folded up on the side. It wasn't like they were all a muss off to the side, like he rolled out of bed and just left the bedding there like a teenager would do, or me. Instead, it looked like he was still laying there, and they all just went down, and his body was just sucked out of there. That's how miraculous this tomb was. Romans 9.33 Romans 9.33, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. See, every single person has a stone laying in their way to the throne of the Lord. Every single one of us has that stone that's laying there. See, people, we unfortunately, that, that stumbling stone might be because we have a wrong idea of who Jesus is. We don't have an understanding of how much he actually loves us. Perhaps it's a false doctrine. False doctrines overcomplicate salvation, right? All of a sudden, we start to believe all this crazy stuff, and we start to complicate salvation because we, we're not, we haven't been presented a right Jesus by people in wrong churches or people who don't understand Scripture at all. See, Jesus is a stumbling stone to those that can't get past their own desires and their own human logic and their own human thoughts. The stone will not roll out of the way until pride has been dealt with and destroyed. For every person that comes to the Lord, there is a right time for them to be planted into the Lord. For the rest, they'll continue to stumble over the stone and never gain entrance to the tomb. <clears throat> Second... 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. We don't have a slide for that one. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Christian's job description? Christian's job description. Go, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Lord. But on top of that, that making disciples is teaching them and helping them to get past their past sins. It's helping them to move forward in their life. And you know what? If they decide that the individual decides, well, you know what? I still want to live in this sin. I still want to be, I want to be a Christian, but I still want to live in this sin. That's on them. It's not on the Christian. It's on that person. They've made that active decision. That's their choice. <clears throat> Zechariah 12.3 and Matthew 21.44. On that day I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it will surely hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth will gather against it. Matthew 21.44. 
And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The, the Palestines, the Philistines, it was a custom for them to test their strength. And what they would do to test their strength is that they would basically go to like Gold's Gym. Essentially, they would take rocks of various size and weight, and they would lift them to show how strong they were and how mighty they were. And here with, with Zechariah, it's a, it's a prophetic word that that stone, some of these people were, were lifting stones that were way too heavy for them to lift. If you lift something that's way too heavy for you, what happens to your back? Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've made the mistake. I've lifted with my back before. It's entertaining. It's fun. I cry. I whine. I'm a baby. Yeah, poor Jamie. <laughs> That's the church I attend. Poor Jamie. <clears throat> Nothing for me. Just poor her. Everybody thinks she's wonderful. I agree. I agree. She puts up with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> for those on the recording it was said that they agree so see this this stone this stone of Jesus is, is going to break those that he, it falls upon and, and what it's saying there is it's actually more of a grinding it's a grading because Jesus isn't crushing those people just yet he's still working with each person he's trying to rub off of them the roughness he's trying to get the things out of them that will prevent them from coming to him and surrendering their life to him that's the that's what he's doing there but the best part of that stone the best part about that stone being rolling it crushed somebody it crushed satan yeah, that's a good spot for an amen. And you know what? It has. It's crushed him. We have victory. The resurrection, when the resurrection happened, that stone rolled out of the way. Satan was crushed. When the, when the stone of the tomb rolled open, it has broken a lot of people throughout the centuries. When people are broken, it's that, that we find Jesus. It's always the broken, the contrite heart, the, the ones who are hurt the most that find Jesus in the biggest way. Most of the time, you've got to find somebody who hits rock bottom, and then they can find Jesus. And you know, when they hit rock bottom and they find Jesus, oh, it's going to be a serious walk. It's going to be phenomenal. Because they know it's, it's nothing of their own doing. It's what Jesus has done for them. See, others, others just stumble over the stone on their way to their life that they're living. You know, those individuals who are living the best life now because there's no pleasant afterlife. But to Satan, it gives that crushing blow. And unfortunately, to those that reject Jesus and not allowing him to roll the stone away in their life, ultimately, it's going to crush them as well. See, the stone of stumbling is what keeps us from Jesus. But it's also a stone that Satan will continually try to roll back into your life. See, the tomb has been open. We can go in as a throne room. But isn't it Satan's job to continually say, I'm going to roll the stone back over. There's nothing to see here. Wrong tomb. Move on. Let me, let me put the stone back in place because I, I don't want you coming in here. I don't want anybody coming in here and seeing Jesus because if he's been resurrected, then I've lost See, the, the, tone, the, the stone could be even doubt through a false teaching. Even doubt through a false teaching. A couple days ago, I was reading an article on Kanye West. We all know him, right? Part, tied up with the Kardashians, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. At one point, perhaps, maybe. He now goes by Yi, by the way, for those of you who want to know why Yi, Yi. Um, now, it, that's for his music stuff. I know, you're probably wondering, well, Pastor Jake, you're well-versed in all this stuff. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> back in, I can't remember if it was 2019, 2020, 2021, somewhere around in there, he, he accepted Jesus. And he completely changed everything in his life. And, I mean, he was meeting with some, some big individuals and, in, you know, big mega churches. He was meeting with these people. And when he got saved, first thing he did was he put out a Christian album. He put together a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, he, he was raised in, in a Christian family, Christian household. So, I mean, he knows the Christian faith. He understands it. So he was able to write albums and put these together for people. 
which was great. He started doing concerts all over the place, and they called them Sunday church services, or Sunday services is what they called them. And it drew in a ton of people. He had other Christian artists get up. He had choirs that would sing throughout. He had all these things taking place. He had speakers come in and speak from the stage and, and give words of encouragement and words to uplift people. Unfortunately, some of those people that he was surrounding himself with, I disagree with completely because theirs is a false gospel, not a complete gospel. Now, fast forward. Fast forward to today. Today, he's calling himself Ye. Not only is he calling himself Ye, he's also referring to himself as God. I am God is what he said. He has said those words, and he spoke those words. Is, is that what we should be doing as Christians? No. Oh, absolutely not. That's, uh, there's a level of blasphemy that goes above and beyond. That's it. He's, reached, he's also returned to his old lyrics as well. And Unfortunately, I see that he's been separated from his first love. Now, you might be asking me, Pastor Jake, how did he get there? How did he get there? How did he get to this point? Well, real simple. Knowing the teachers he surrounded himself with, he came across a struggle in his life. He had some issues that came up that, that created a roadblock in his life. A stone had been rolled into his path. And he prayed against that stone. He prayed against that stone. And he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. Now, because of the people that he was surrounding himself with, that stone should have been removed for him. You know, he declared it, he decreed it. He said, this, in Jesus' name, this thing has to be removed. And it wasn't removed. So he says, well, if God's not going to remove it for me, I'll remove it for myself. See, unfortunately, what, what Mr. West fell into, the situation he fell into is what, what I call vending machine Christianity. Vending machine Christianity. You walk up to the vending machine, what's it cost today for a pop? What is it, Coke? Dollar fifty, two dollars and seventy, two fifty. Holy cow! Holy, cow. forget the credit card. Show up with a bank loan and see if I can get approved. That's a lot of money. So two dollars and fifty cents. My notes say dollar fifty. Wow, I'm way outdated. Two dollars and fifty cents for a Coke. You put the two dollars fifty cents in. You push B eleven or whatever, and boop. Here comes your Coke, right? Christianity doesn't work that way. You put stuff in, God's going to change your inside. He's, he might not answer your prayer the way you want it answered. He might look at it and say, you know what? No, I'm going to let you struggle with this for a while. You know why? You know what struggle brings to you? Character. 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 It change. It's going to change you. It's going to modify you. It's going to make you more usable for, for Jesus. So every time there's a stone rolling into your pathway, instead of saying, Jesus, get this out of here. Okay, Jesus, why is this here? Could you help me walk this out? I want to walk through this stone. I need you to help me roll it out of the way. And he'll do that for you. <clears throat> Where am I? That looks like a good spot. We'll pick up there. For some, the stone will never be removed because they don't desire to know Jesus and make him Lord of their life. And that's part of what Kanye is doing as well. He doesn't, he doesn't want to trust in Jesus. He doesn't want to trust in the process. Instead, he just wants it removed. I think all of us, if we had every situation in our life that sat before us, if it was resolved and answered immediately, that would be awesome, right? It would require no faith. No growth, no character, nothing. <sighs> Spoiled child, I like it. But after coming to Jesus, that, that stone, well, before coming to Jesus, that stone in itself could be Jesus. See, Jesus, when, when he said, follow me, he didn't say, hey, just you know, pick up some daisies and come with me. He didn't say grab a bag of, of Skittles and come with me. He didn't say grab a bag of peanut butter cups and come with me. He didn't say grab a couple boxes of Cadbury eggs and say come with me. Grab, grab your cross and follow me. I mean, we, watch the Passion of the Christ. That cross scene is extremely brutal. 
what Christ went through, and that's what he expects us to go through as well. There's torment. There's things in our life that those stones are going to roll out in front of us, and it's going to be a mammoth stone. We're not going to look down. We're going to be looking up like, how did you put that here? But Jesus. But Jesus. He's got the dunamis power. He's got that power of dynamite through the Holy Spirit that can just blow that thing out of there for you. I don't care what the struggle is. I don't care what the sin is. He can do that in your life. Why? Why can he do that? Because he loves every single one of you in this room. He loves every single one of you online. See, that stone in our life, though, it's, it's temporary for the Christian. There is a day that that stone will be completely rolled and removed from our lives. But until then, but until then, there's, there's a Saturday. There's a Saturday that has to take place. There's that Sabbath that has to take place. There's that rest that has to take place. See, they couldn't run off and go do what they needed to. The distance of a, a day's travel on the Sabbath, they probably would have exceeded that to get to the tomb. See, we need to continue to walk in faith and to worship and be in obedience to Jesus and allow the stone to be removed. When the stone is removed, that's the time. When that stone was rolled open to the tomb, you know what was God saying? The resurrection is here. Not only that, you know what else he was saying? It's like the pop-up timer on the turkey. You cook a turkey on Thanksgiving, and you're sitting there, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. That little pop-up timer comes up. It's, oh, yeah, we get to have turkey now. It's fat-free, by the way. <clears throat> it was the pop-up timer saying, Jesus has reached his perfection. It's the time for the world to meet the one that is the king of kings, the spotless lamb, the resurrection, the one that brings salvation to the world. The one that atones and covers your sins. The, ones that, the one that sets the captives free. The one that is the bridge to allow people to have community with God. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's what he did in that resurrection. The devil actually hates that stone. Until that stone was ro rolled away from the tomb, you know what he was thinking? I won. I won. That's what he was thinking. He was in pride. He's walking around, oh yeah, I won, I won. Woohoo! Victory is mine. It, victory is mine. But you know what? The song's been changed. Victory in Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> See, the stone holding death was rolled away, and that was it. And and when when Satan was walking around saying everything else, Jesus said, "LOL, nope." You see, God was working on a plan that the devil didn't know or understand in his pride. Actually, go ahead and throw up my my new T-shirt. I want to get. Yeah, there it is. YOLO, JK, BRB, Jesus. For those of you who don't know what that means because you don't have teenage children, um, YOLO means you only live once, and then Jesus says, just kidding, and then BRB means be right back. So you only live once, just kidding, be right back. I mean, I think that's beautiful about what Jesus said, and I might get that for my birthday, I don't know. When, when we walk in the reality of the resurrection, when we walk in the reality of the resurrection, there's a newfound reality of life. The stone holding death is rolled away, and we are able to step into that new life. There are many stumbling stones, though, that some of us need to get by to get into the tomb, to get to that throne room of life. When life of the resurrection comes you can no longer allow these stones to stand in the way of you entering that throne room. See, some of us in this room even today online, the stumbling stones could be depression, the stone of fear, the stone of anxiety. Perhaps it's a stone of oppression. Perhaps it's the stone of hurt. Perhaps it's a stone of pain. Perhaps it's a stone of past. Perhaps it's a stone of bondage. You know what? In Jesus' name, they all have the ability to be rolled away. Maybe it's the stone of lowliness. It can be rolled away. See, these stones, they have no power in your life. Jesus rolls away every single one. Like I said earlier, no matter how big that stone is in your life, it might be that MAGA stone, but, but Jesus would say to you, I have this. I got this. I can roll this out of your way. Will you trust me? Will you walk in my path that I have for you? And you know what? It might be the stone that sits there, 
and it's the one you don't want to deal with. It's that big stone that's in the way, and you say, Lord, I, I, I can't deal with that one right now. You know what? Worship Jesus. Keep seeking him. He'll tell you when it's time. He'll say this, it's time for the stone to be rolled back. He'll say it's time for the stone to be removed. And you know what? He's not going to just say, well, figure it out. No. That's why we have the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit to help you blow that thing up and get it out of there. Psalm 78.15. Psalm 78.15. This is a good spot for this one. what's in here. It's like the sauce. Everything's in there. Psalm 78, 15. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. See, that, that's the, what Jesus wants to do. You've got a rock in your life that's standing in the way of you worshiping him. He wants to blow that thing up. He wants to split it in two, and he will. Notice there in the scripture it says he split rocks, being plural. What this is actually referring back to and referencing back to is when Moses took the staff and the Israelites were whining and crying because they were thirsty and they didn't have water, so Moses hit the rock and the rock split and water come out. Unfortunately, later when Moses hit the rock, he beat it more than once. But that's the life that he wants to give you. He wants to split the rocks in your life and provide you with flowing water to be able to walk through that rock. Amen. See, this, this is a safe church. See, sometimes someone might say something that hurts you a bit, and that rock is rolled out or whatever. See, I pray that each one of us in the church, that we're led in the Holy Spirit as we approach our corrections in life. We as a church are concerned about the truth of the word over your life. Why? Well, we love you enough to help you, and most importantly, how about your eternity? That's the biggest thing I think everyone in this room needs to be concerned about with each other is each other's eternity. See, I stand before you. I know I'm not perfect. My wife will tell you. If she doesn't, the elders will. And if they don't, you've probably already picked up on it. <clears throat> See, each one of us is going to have to give an account to the Lord one day. I, as your shepherd, I need to lead you. The elders need to lead you. You also need to help lead one another. The mission of Jesus is to guide people to maturity. That's the job of the church every single day is to help to guide people to maturity, not put up stumbling blocks, not to cause people to have issues and problems. Our job is to take down strongholds, take down those, those stones out of people's lives that are causing them to fall. Jesus wants to remove that stone that's in the way of each one of us. And Jesus said, taste and see. He is inviting all today to taste his words and truth about who he is. I'm going to close here. And as I close, I'm going to ask the baptism candidates to go and get ready. I'm also going to ask somebody, my service coordinator, to go get the children in the back. And then I've got a few more wrapping up points here. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, the church walks today in victory. Amen. We all walk in victory if we choose to allow the stone to be rolled out of our way. The stone has been rolled away for you. The tomb is open today to worship Jesus. Now I'm going to ask everyone to just close their eyes for a moment, bow your heads. <clears throat> Jesus enrolling that stone away. He made it so there's, there's no blockage between us and him. We can walk freely to him, but, but sometimes we put stones between us and him. 
We put a stone of doubt or a stone of whatever, misunderstanding. Jesus just wants all, every person to come to him. Make him Lord. And if, if each one of us in the room who's been a Christian for more than five, ten years will, will tell you, it's difficult. When we say we make him Lord, it's difficult. But today I want to give an invite that if, if you have not made him Lord of your life, and you want to because you know that you've sinned, you know that you've fallen short. But you say, Jesus, I need you today. I really need you. I want you in my life. I want you to help me overcome these stones that I have in my life between me and you. He will do that. He will help you to get these stones out. I'm going to ask you just to repeat this prayer. If the church wants to repeat it as well with me, that's fine. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I do not measure up. I miss your standard. And I can't meet it. On my own. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. And invite you to come into my heart. And life. Amen. Amen. Still with every eye closed, every head bowed this morning. If that's something you prayed today and it's the first time you prayed that, if it's the first time you prayed that today, I'm just going to ask you to just give me a quick little wave. Okay. See your hands. So, Lord, I, I thank you this morning. I thank you for what you're doing in, in these individuals' lives, Lord, what you're doing in each one of our lives. Lord, I thank you that, that as that stone's been rolled away from each Christian, that we don't have to worry that that stone's going to keep, you, keep us from your promises. So, Lord, help us, build us, equip us into who you need to be as stone crushers and stone rollers. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, I'm going to ask uh, Melanie. She's going to take some pictures for us today uh, so Jennifer can do tech and stuff. Um, Baptisms on Resurrection Sunday are awesome. One of the major symbolisms of baptisms is that we're buried again with Christ. See, when we're buried again, we're, we're basically placed in the tomb with him. And then we raise up by, with him again into his resurrection. Romans 6, 3 and 4 says, Do you not know that all of us, who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We're buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. See, I love that part about the baptism. It's, it's a promise as we make this dedication to the Lord that we get to walk in the newness of life. Baptism... Baptism is very significant. See, when we first say we're going to follow Jesus and we're going to walk with Jesus, that, that in my eyes, my vision of the world is, it's us saying, I'm engaged to Jesus. I'm, I'm giving my, my life to him is, is that type of commitment that we're making in that moment. When, when we come to being baptized, this is more like the wedding. Because the wedding is a public declaration of commitment to that relationship. And that's the relationship that we have in and with Jesus. So we have two individuals this morning that we're going to baptize, Fred and, and Carrie. So if you guys could open the tank. The dunk tank. You want to help with towels? 
Uh, I went with dry ice this time. <laughs> All right, did you guys play rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first? <clears throat> You're welcome. This is going to be good. First thing, uh, just to get this out of the way, don't laugh at my legs. They have not seen sun since I was like 18. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so um, I spent last night pretty much the whole week kind of thinking what I'm going to say and how I'm going to say it. Um, and this is more of a, a journey of how I got to this point. Um, due to my job in the Army, I've seen the worst humanity in the area, in the area of the world. It seemed that God and the Word of Christ was nowhere to be found. This accumulated with my PTS that I have mid mid led myself to admit I had, even though I knew I had it. In 2011, I went for help for the darkness that I felt inside and, in, and the demons that I had. At this time in my life, I felt that I was a lost soul and I was coming to grips with that. This led me down a dark road of anger and hate. I took it out on my family, isolated myself from everyone including God. Fast forward to 2013. I retired from the Army. I lost my family. I was drinking heavily. I was 45 years old, living back home. I was in my room upstairs. I was in a house with my mother and my father, yet I felt alone moving down a road that I knew eventually would lead me to taking my own life. It was a Saturday night. It was a Saturday night. I felt that God somehow influenced my mother to come up to my room that day, look at me in all my despair, and tell me, I know what you need. You need to go to church with me tomorrow. Although I protested and the debate got heated, my mother never faltered. She persisted in telling me, the devil is only there if you let him in. Not in those exact words, but the meaning was clear. I ran towards bullets. I never feared anything. Yet that Sunday, that Sunday morning, my mother came to my room and in no uncertain terms said, you're going with me. So begrudgingly, I got up and got ready to go. Yet I, the big strong soldier, was scared to death to walk in that church that day. I have turned my back on the Lord. Why would he want me in his house of worship? With my mother's guidance, I went to church. I sat down in the service and began with a, that began with song and prayer. Somewhere in that, I felt something that I had not felt in a long time, and it was the love of God. It was so overwhelming that I had to get up out of my chair and walk out into the hall. As tears ran down my face, I felt such a calm. Somehow, I knew that he was telling me that if I just trusted in him, opened my heart, that he will guide me to the path of clarity. It was that moment standing in the front hall of this church that I opened my heart and, filled, and it filled me with hope and light that I had never felt. That weekend, an angel came down to bless my mother with the power to see that I was lost and what, I needed, and what needed to be done to save me and guide me. Since then, God's angel has come time and again to my mother to slowly walk me through the trials that bring me to here today to be baptized and fully give my life to God. Amen. That's good. The uh, stairs are on the far side. They'll guide you in and help you so you don't fall. <laughs> if 
Did you find the dry ice? Yep. <coughs> <laughs> it's not that bad, I hope. <sighs> so based on your confession in Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. They got bottles behind you. You're welcome. Awesome. Congratulations. It's fantastic. See, it's amazing what a mother's love and a mother's prayers can do. See, a mother's prayers they have an ability to go into new and deeper places when mothers pray, especially gray-haired mothers. <clears throat> if I need prayer for something, you know who I seek out in the church? The gray-haired women. No, because I know that they're praying individuals. I know that they're individuals that have a special touch with, with the Father. So because of that, I know that I go to them. Their prayers are going to avail with much. So, awesome, awesome. Are you ready? I'm going with yes. We're You're going ready. with slightly nervous, but yes, I'm ready. Nothing to be nervous for. Roll that stone out of the way. I'm working on it, but, you know, I got a little upper arm strength going on here. <laughs> so when I was writing this, I... Um, I was trying to figure out just what way I did want to roll the stone out of the way and how I wanted to handle everything because there has been so much in my life that has pushed me in a million different directions that I, I just needed to find myself. So I was blessed as a child to be allowed to find my own way. That showed me early on just how personal religion really is to a person. I started on my voyage praying alone in my bed at night, trying to find just the way things were for me. But then something really tragic happened in my life and I lost someone so dear to me that I was looking for answers and I prayed even harder trying to find them. I was left with more questions than answers. So I started looking into every religion, everything that I could just to try to find what I needed. And I ended up settling on a little bit of everything because for a long time that's just what felt right to me. Just figuring out my way. So I eventually gave birth to three wonderful children. They're my world. And I offered them the same gift. Don't let anyone choose who you are and find what feels personal to you and ask questions. That all changed for me almost two years ago. The enemy stepped in and my middle daughter's mind was poisoned against me. In the end, my oldest daughter, who I'm still close with, went to college, and my ex-husband took my children away. The poison spread so far that my middle daughter won't talk to me, and I lost my job. I had worked so hard to get. I was once again lost in searching for answers. And during that struggle, I met a man that helped me find my way back to my beliefs. After a year of on and off together, he helped me find my way back to myself. Not only did I find my way back to the Lord, he has given us the strength to walk this path together. He's not only my best friend, but the person who offered me forever together. I am also blessed with the family I've found here. When I'm at my lowest, I know I can find a kind word or a much-needed prayer. When I made this choice to be baptized, I told Pastor Jake that the Lord has given so much to me that I want to give him this. Little did I know that my words were deeper than I could have ever imagined. I started seeking the Lord's walk the path alongside me while I worked through my pain and wrote this testimony, helping me be ready for my next step. I come here ready come here today ready to take that step. So now I gift myself to the Lord, not as a slave, but as his servant. To love him as he has always loved me. No 
else on the phone? No, no. No, I left it on there. Okay. Somebody toss me your cell phone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Before I forget, you told me no rubber duckies. So when I made my shirt, I got a rubber ducky on this side just for you. excitement, the anticipation, it's finally here, right? I hope it. See, the one thing of Carrie's story, I'm going to make her sit for a second. <laughs> the one thing about Carrie's story is she came to me probably about a month ago and said, I'd like to get baptized. And what I told her was, you know, we could baptize you any time, but would you like to wait for Resurrection Sunday? And I was talking to her and Gary about it. Gary was like, wow, that, that sounds cool. Do, do Resurrection Sunday. Do that. So the sim symbolism today I know for you is, is so much more, and it's so much more special because of what you've walked through. So you ready? All right. Go ahead. And... So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there anybody else today that would like to get baptized right now, right here? If there's anybody else that says they want to get baptized right now, we'll, we'll baptize you. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> we'll talk in a little bit when I know you're, you're a little bit older and you understand. Although, <laughs> although when, I was, when I was four years old, when I was four years old, my, my mom reminds me of this story. We were attending the Pratt Hollow Methodist Church. And while I was attending the Pratt Hollow Methodist Church as a four-year-old boy, they were doing baptisms about this time as well. My mom said, I, I made a special point, because we didn't have children's ministry. As a five, four or five-year-old kid, you sat in the sanctuary and you listened to everything. There was no special teaching for you. You guys remember those days, right? I mean, some of you are slightly older than me by a couple of years. Some of you are my age. <clears throat> but at the age of four, I said, I need to be baptized. And I went and I talked to the pastor. We sat down, we talked about baptism, and he said, I was ready. I could be baptized. I thought that was the coolest thing. But to be honest with you, I don't remember any of it. When I turned 18, I got baptized again when I got saved. So, baptism, what a celebration it is. I know they'll be joining us in the back for fellowship, cookies, cake, snacks, vegetables, fruit, maybe something fat-free. Um, so with that, let's lift the Lord up in prayer one more time, thank him for what he's done today, and then we'll be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made going into that tomb. Lord, that you made the sacrifice to split the stones out of our path, to roll them out of the way. Lord, that we can come to you freely, that we can enter your throne room. Not just on Resurrection Sunday, but the day after Resurrection Sunday on Monday. We can do this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even Friday and even Saturday. We don't need a special day to celebrate your resurrection because, Lord, we're Christians. We put our hope and faith and trust in your resurrection, knowing full well that because you went through it, when the time comes for us to pass from this earth, Lord, we'll pass from this earth into your glory because of your resurrection. We will join you in that resurrection that you experienced in full reality. So, Father God, today I'm just asking that you would continue to raise up and work in this church, Lord. That you would bless those who attend here, our members, Lord. That you would encourage them. 
you would encourage them over the next few weeks and months even, Lord, that as, as they see stones in their path, the MAGA stones, Lord, that there's not a worry, there's not a trembling. We each would have the knowledge and understanding that you've already walked through that stone. Every temptation known to man, you walked through. Every sin known to man, you bore upon your life and upon your body. Lord, we thank you today that that resurrection points to your forgiveness of those sins. That your resurrection says that there is life. Though I was dead, I'm now made alive in Christ. So, Father God, today we just give you everything. We give you the joy that we have in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. This morning, this morning, if you have a, a stone in your life that's been rolled out of the way, just give the Lord one more clap offering. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're dismissed this morning. Join the party with us as we also celebrate those who are baptized. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week.